Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today. We've got some good news. The day has finally come. Judge Benitez is dropping decisions for lawsuits. No, it's not all four, and no, it is not a CRPA lawsuit yet, but he did drop his decision in Miller, uh, which was a challenge to the assault weapons regulations here in California. So to talk about it today and do a little bit of deciphering, we have uh, CRPA's president, Chuck Michelle. Chuck, thank you very much for being with us today. I'm doing great, real great today. This is a big win. All right, Chuck. So, you know, the first one wasn't the CRPA case, but it's still worth mentioning. This is the Miller v. Bonta case. Uh, it's a case that is challenging the assault weapons regulations in California. We haven't talked about this case too much in depth on the channel other than mentioning that it exists. Can you take us through this one uh, and and just talk about how this uh, this decision is going to affect assault weapons regulations in California? Well, I mean, they've been struck down. Essentially, there is no such thing as an assault weapon once this law, once this decision becomes final, which will will take a while. It's going to go up on appeal. But this case uh, is a sister case to the CRPA's RUP case, which is also uh, it, it's still in the courts, uh, and uh, that challenges the so-called Assault Weapon Control Act, the whole body of law that require, that bans certain guns from being possessed or imported, or they have to be registered, or whatever all the, the, uh, the, the rigmarole that the states puts you through to stop you from getting one, and if you have one, to make it expensive and so they can track it. Uh, but so this this is this law was uh, the reality is the California Assault Weapon Control Act. The legacy of that law is accidental felons, good people who, at the stroke of a politician's pen, their gun was turned in their gun safe was turned into a, a felon felony overnight because somebody decided they didn't like the look of that gun. And that's what it's really always, always been about is cosmetics. Uh, th these guns, semi-automatic firearms are, are in common use. They're, they're for multiple purposes, hunting, target shooting, uh, self-defense. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just this, uh, Heller made it clear, not you didn't even need to wait to Bruin. Heller made it clear that these firearms are commonly possessed for lawful purposes, purposes and so the state cannot ban them. And Bruin made it even harder for them to try and justify this kind of a ban. Uh, but they did. Uh, but they thankfully, Judge Benitez saw through that. The, the United States District Court uh, decision from him is now uh, on the record books. The state will no doubt appeal immediately. And I expect what we're going to get is the, the Ninth Circuit will maintain the status quo. And they, in other words, they won't they won't allow the injunction to go in place, to go into effect immediately. They will uh, wait until they will let the Ninth Circuit, they will have it go through the Ninth Circuit and potentially the Supreme Court uh, before this decision becomes a final judgment, at which time uh, that law will go off the books. And interestingly enough, the, 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 the litigation over semi-automatic bans and magazine that can hold over 10 rounds bans or capacity some are some are 15 some are seven it's you know the state they can't even it's completely arbitrary in some cases uh but there's there's litigation going on on, on those issues in multiple states illinois maryland massachusetts uh oregon uh uh so that this may very well be the issue that winds up back in front of the united states supreme court on a second amendment challenge i don't know which state it might come out of but uh, California's got a bit of a head start right now, so uh, we maybe us. Well, okay, so I think that there are a couple of really important distinctions that you've made there. So Bruin decision, I mean, as we've all talked about, made the decision-making process stronger um, in, in favor of, you know, pro-Second Amendment cases like these. Um, <clears throat> so you have... Uh, you know, that as an idea, but you don't necessarily have a whole lot of cases that are proving it to be true. So now we have four concrete cases that are proving that to be true. What does that mean uh, for other Second Amendment lawsuits potentially throughout California? And what does it mean for these that will be continuing to go up to the Ninth Circuit? Well, remember, the, these were just these were just the, the, the front of the pack, so to speak, in California, because uh, Judge Benitez had heard these cases already. Uh, so it was a, a reconsideration in a sense. It was a do-over in a sense. 
even though we won the first time around. Uh, so it's not surprising that under the heightened standard in Bruin, it's, it, it's even harder for a state to justify uh, an infringement on your right to keep and bear arms. So uh, the, the, these, will, these were at the, the front of the pack in California, but there are, CRPA has multiple more cases pending in California on the roster, on, on taxes, on insurance, on CCW uh, and sensitive places and uh, uh, making it impossible for a person to qualify for a CCW. We have dozens of challenges all now being reconsidered under the Bruin standard. So we do expect that we're going to get a lot of wins uh, as we travel down this road. You can't mail it in. You have to actually do the work, do the legwork, do the litigation. You have to, and the judges are all going to let the state have its say and try and pepper the record with as much uh, uh, justification for these ordinance, for these statutes as they can come up with. But this is a good sign that Judge Benitez saw through that and recognized that the, the things that the state was trying to claim justified these laws do not make the law constitutional under Bruin. Okay, and I guess the last question that I have, so, I, well, first of all, I mean, that's something we're going to have to stay tuned into. We're going to try to provide the most up-to-date information, especially as, like you said, the lawyers dig into it and they they really start interpreting some of this stuff. Uh, yeah, I but, mean, uh, remember, the same thing applies to the semi-auto ban and the billy club. The law uh, is not final until the, 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 there's a judgment, a final judgment, and that judgment does not come until after all the appeals are exhausted. Right. So we'll go up right. to the Ninth Circuit, and if we win in the Ninth Circuit, it'll be fun to watch whether DOJ tries to uh, appeal that to the Supreme Court, uh, or potentially an en banc panel, which has been their their gambit in the past. That's how a couple of decisions have been positive decisions wins, like in the Peruta uh, must issue case and the Duncan uh, Magban case. Those they stole those wins from us by going up to an en banc panel of eleven judges rather than stopping at the, the three judge panel. Uh, and that's been there. That's been the ninth circuits practice, but now the ninth circuits composition has changed. There aren't the same number of democratic appointed judges up there anymore. It's about even. So uh, it's not a foregone conclusion that we lose in the ninth circuit as it, as it kind of was in the past. I mean, the ninth circuit had like 50 cases uh, in front of it after Heller and we didn't win on any because the Ninth Circuit was stacked against us. But Trump put a lot, the Trump administration put a lot of uh, uh, different thinking judges in there. And so we have, we have a good chance and we have to fight to, to do that. But if we don't win there, uh, we will go to the, the United States Supreme Court. There are cases all across the country where Bruin is being uh, uh, road tested, so to speak, uh, assault weapon case, so-called assault weapon cases, magazine bans, uh, bans on person, per specific types of people, uh, you know, marijuana users, or uh, th there's all kinds of cases uh, making their way up to the court, not to mention sensitive places in New York and New Jersey, uh, where the state's trying to make your CCW worthless because just to drive across town, you have to go through a sensitive area where your CCW is invalid. Uh, these are the kinds of games that are being played, and uh, the Supreme Court is ultimately going to have to resolve some of these issues. Uh, but in the meantime, we just have to keep fighting and, uh, and wait for either another jurisdiction to get another Supreme Court opinion that we can use here or for one of our cases to make it to the Supreme Court. Well, speaking of those appeals, um, I'm curious what your thoughts are. You know, you, you talked about how this was uh, a rehashing for Judge Benitez. Uh, some of these lawsuits are also going to be a rehashing for the Ninth Circuit. Uh, we saw what I would certainly describe as an expedited process with Judge Benitez. And, you know, as far as I understand, it's because a lot of the merits were already ruled on what they were really considering here was Bruin. Uh, can we expect a quick a quicker turnaround in the Ninth Circuit, kind of like we did uh, in the district court with Judge Benitez? No, unfortunately, I don't think so. I think the Ninth Circuit's going to try and drag its feet, frankly, because they hope for a change of composition at the United States Supreme Court. They're looking at 2024 presidential election and, and how the Senate might uh, change. And so they're, they're hoping that they can get uh, a change at the Supreme Court uh, 
because of, you know, and unfortunately, like with Judge Scalia, he died. Uh, some of these judges are, are, are getting up there. So I think they're, they're trying to, and this goes for anti-gun owner states too, across the country. They're trying to stall things uh, so that they can uh, try and win at the Supreme Court next time around. But in the meantime, uh, the cases keep going forward and uh, may or may not go past the Ninth Circuit. It just, it, it, you know, we'll have to see how the litigation ball bounces is what it comes down to. <laughs> right. Well, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Chuck, I really appreciate you coming on and, and giving us this clarity. We're going to get back with you, I'm sure, soon to talk about more updates with these as they continue to go, go through the courts. Please keep supporting CRPA so we can keep fighting for your rights and, and reclaiming uh, the rights that have been taken away from us for the last couple of decades by the uh, uh, the politicians in Sacramento. So we had a great start with uh, with the Bruin decision as it's working its way through California. If you like the content that was provided for you today, we are trying to earn your subscription. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers. So please, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the like and share button. We're trying to get this info out to as many people as possible. It really helps with the algorithms. Thanks, guys, again, and we'll see you on the next one.